Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Top 5 Friday. We're doing things a little different this time. We're doing a Top 10 list, but it is 5 of one and 5 of the other. This list was requested by my friend and fellow author Chad Lutsky. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it. I, I will say, actually I won't just jump right into it. The Top 5 Hopeful Books was extremely difficult for me to, to, to pick out. Um, in fact, if I was hard pressed to try and find a sixth one, I don't think I could. I went at this for two hours, um, and there was only five books in my collection that I found eventually where I was like, yeah, that left me with a good feeling of hope at the end, which got me kind of ruminating on, my, on, on why, why am I so drawn to hopelessness? Um, I really gravitate toward that side of things no matter what and I didn't want to put nonfiction on here because basically all the nonfiction I read is kind of hopeful I mean it, you, you read a biography or whatever um, like uh, Becoming by Michelle Obama the whole reason I read it was because I knew it was going to be hopeful uh, or unfuck yourself or a subtle art of not giving a fuck or several different things um, but I didn't think putting Nonfiction on this list was right. I don't know why. So, um, but if if you think I should have, then on this list, throw on Michelle Obama's Becoming, and throw on Unfuck Yourself, and even The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Uh, those are hopeful books, I guess. Um, they they trying to make you uh, well. Obama, Michelle Obama's book isn't, but you know they they try to uh, promote hope. <laughs> to, to, because they're self-help books. If there's no hope, what the fuck are you even doing, right? All right, so the uh, I'm going to start with the hopeful books and then end with the hopeless books only because I like the hopeless books more. It's not to say that these are bad books. These are all great books. Um, it's just I don't, I, I don't tend to care too much for hopeful stories. Whatever. Uh, so the first one is Robert McCammon's Gone South. Uh, one of the things that I remember the most about this book, it is my favorite McCammon novel, um, is the the theme of acceptance and hope. Uh, that's that's one of the things that I remember the most about it. In fact, when I started to search for these things, it's the first book that I grabbed. Um, so maybe it's number one. None of the, these aren't really in order at all. Um, I even thought at one point in time to alternate back and forth, but I think it'd be better if I just went through all the hopeful ones and then got to the hopeless ones. Um, so yeah, Gone South is a great one, mainly because of the, uh, the uh, not the idea, it's just the, the theme of acceptance. Uh, I really, really dug that. Next up, uh, and no, he's not on this list because he requested it. It's literally one of the only other hopeful books I could find, and that was Chad Lutsky's Skull Face Boy. Uh, I loved this book. Uh, there's, there's something about uh, Levi and the shenanigans he gets up to, but the ending is is, is very hopeful, and I, I appreciated that because I was I thought for sure, you know, dude being a horror author that it was going to go some bad places. Or I mean, he says he's a horror author. There's one thing I remember him saying. Uh, uh, he hadn't seen a certain horror movie, and he's like, what kind of horror author am I? Uh, I don't think Chad Lutsky is a horror author. Uh, I think he might be dark fiction, maybe even literary fiction. Uh, I, I honestly believe he floats more toward the literary fiction side of things. But he definitely uh, surrounds himself with the, with the horror community, and he is part of the horror community. Uh, but I don't consider him a horror author. Uh, I haven't read anything from him that was horrifying in a horror sense. Wallflower was pretty fucking horrifying, but I don't think it was, like, the intention was to horrify. He just tells slice of life stories, really, with some weird aspects here and there. Um, I haven't read a whole lot of his short fiction, so if there's more horror in that realm, then, then definitely. I also haven't read Out Behind the Barn or Same Deep Water as you either, so... I don't know, but y'all can discuss if y'all read Chad Lutsky down there. Y'all can just, just talk about him, because he watches these videos. Just talk about him. Just say all the things about him. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. Uh, next up is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. It, <laughs> this book made me cry my, my, my ass off, but I think the overall message was a hopeful one. Um, it, it's sad and depressing, but at the end of the day, this book actually made me smile. Um, it, it took a terrifying, horrible thing and it didn't make light of it. It just made it it's personable and understandable and 
I, I think all of John Green's work is hopeful there at the end. He's one of those authors who looks for the bright side of life kind of deal. And if you followed him, um, in fact, my, uh, you know, down there in the doobly-doo when I say that, I actually got that from the Vlog Brothers, which is John and Hank Green. Uh, Hank Green has a book out, too, called uh, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. But John Green is really the novelist of the family. He's, he's gotten, you know, he's got, what, six books by now? Maybe more? I'm not sure. Um, I haven't read Hank's, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but I consider Hank a YouTuber, and I consider John um, a an author. How weird is that, right? But anyways, yeah, The, the Fault in Our Stars, I found it hopeful. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Um, another one, Palisades Park, was a fantastic saga of one family and a, a boardwalk. I mean, this is one of my favorite books of all time. It was on my top 20 list um, until something more hopeless <laughs> knocked it off. I'm terrible, I know. But uh, yeah, so Palisades Park, if you have not read this, uh, this is a terrific, terrific book in uh, if you are a fan of carnivals or boardwalks or amusement parks or anything like that. Some fascinating stuff in here. But overall, this is a hopeful book. Um, it's one of the first... Um, I don't want to call it one of the first non-horror novels that I just fanboyed over. Um, I went out and bought all of uh, Bernert's, Alan Bernert's books after this one. Um, but uh, it, it was the first one, it, well, it, I guess it was the first one that I really fanboyed uh, over and I started looking for other stuff in this, in this genre, which I guess is contemporary fiction. I'm not exactly sure what Alan Bernert is considered. Uh, but I went out looking for more books like it. You know, Goodreads is terrible. Hey, if you like this book, go look at this one. I haven't liked any of those other books. So maybe it's just Alan Bernard's writing that I like. But I found that one extremely hopeful. Um, this next one is one that I had forgotten about, um, not because it is forgettable, but because especially the cover makes you think hopelessness or makes you think something ho hopeless. But it's uh, Eleanor by Jason Gurley. Um, even though the book is tremendously sad, there was a feeling of hope. I love how depression is handled in this in this book. Um, there's a there's a death in this family, and it's the way all the, the family members react. But none of it is like on the on our reality's plane. It's all like fantastic. It's all basically really dark fantasy, almost like a dark crystal kind of thing. And the visuals are amazing. That's one thing that I remember about this. But I came out of this book feeling hopeful, and I hope it's actually <laughs> hopeful <laughs> since I put it on the list, um, but I do, I do have very hopeful, I, I, I have hope thinking about this book, you know, it, it gives me a positive, uh, a positive outlook on life and depression and uh, all that stuff, on anxiety, and um, if you have not read Eleanor, I would highly, highly recommend that one. I'm going to take a second and restack these things because if not, all the hardcovers are going to be on top. And then we're done with, with uh, the hopeful stuff. So now we are going to talk about the hopeless stuff. Um, I'm going to try and put these in some kind of uh, semblance of order uh, just because... Okay, the first one is, this is the hopeless category. So uh, buckle your seatbelts, Beatrice. We're going, we're going all in. Uh, Where All Light Tends to Go by David Joy. Uh, I thought this one was going to a completely different place than it did. Uh, when it ended, I was left speechless, and I felt terrible for, for like a week. Uh, the main character, I really came to know and enjoy reading about, and his books are extremely short. I think they're all, all of his books are about 250 pages long. In fact, going into, I had to take a lot of time in between this one and his second novel, The Weight of This World, because I wasn't prepared for the soul-crushing uh, feeling that he is, it's hilarious that his name's David Joy, but <laughs> his books just crush you. Um, and the weight of this world crushes you also, but it has a more hopeful, no, I don't know that it's hopeful, it has a happier ending than this one does. This one just, just completely just, just floored me and beat me into the ground. Um, and it's one of the first books that I picked up uh, when I was thinking about doing this list. Next up is one of those books that I just made me feel dirty um, and made me feel like everybody in the world was a monster. Um, it, I don't know why it, it left me like that, but it's in the miso soup by Ryu Mitakami. Um, there's certain aspects of this book that I remember reading and I still to this day I feel disgusted for having read it and enjoyed it. Um, it but 
that there's a there's something to be said about jo enjoying hopelessness because you know that once you close the book, you can go back to your life. It's over and done with. It's kind of like getting on and off a roller coaster. You know, you know it's going to be terrifying. You know it's going to be, but also you pretty much guaranteed you're going to get off of that ride, um, in, in intact. At least that's the promise when you get on it. I know there's been terrible accidents, but that's not what I'm talking about. You know, you know this. Um, this book left me utterly distraught. Uh, I. <laughs> I still, to this day, every time I picture, uh, every time I see this book, I, I actually keep it out of sight behind some other books. Um, every time I see this book, I think of one certain scene that really, really bothered me. Um, and it, I got to thinking about certain things after I finished it. I went and looked up certain things that I probably shouldn't have, ended up on the wrong side of the internet. It was all fucked up. So this book gives me a sense of hopelessness. Uh, next, I, I'm sure... Up until now, you might agree or disagree with all these things, but I'm pretty sure that everyone will agree on this book. Um, because everyone I talk to bring up the, the, the idea or the feeling of hopelessness while you're reading it. And that's Blood Meridian uh, by Cormac McCarthy. Or what's it called? Or The Evening Redness in the West. Um, I like Blood Meridian. I'm glad they pretty much call it Blood Meridian. I like that title better. Uh, this book just... That... <sighs> There's characters in here that made my flesh crawl, but it's just the the overall nature of the book. While you're reading, you know nothing is going to end well. You know when you read Cormac McCarthy, you know you were in for a gut punch. And this is one of his best as far as that's concerned. Um, I've heard silly, silly stuff about how he's overrated. Uh, um, he's terrible because he doesn't use quotation marks, all that silly stuff. But... There's a there's a definite sense of hopelessness when you read Cormac McCarthy, and it's it's just a sense of nihilism. It's like he knows nothing matters. He knows that none of this matters, and that most of us have terrible aspects of our personality, things that we keep hidden, dark, dirty secrets in that regard. Another author that does that really, really well, or that normalizes terrible shit, is Herman Koch. I just want to throw this out there real quick. If you like Cormac McCarthy, uh, you might like uh, Herman Koch, and, but only because they look at the reality of humanity. Um, there is hope, there is kindness, there is all that stuff, but we are, we are the nasty details. That's what we focus on, you know, just like with the news. If it bleeds, it leads, that kind of deal. Um, news organizations know what's going to bring people in, and that's the terrible shit in the world, and that's what, you know, what Cormac McCarthy uh, really focuses in on. Uh, next up, we have <laughs> Song of Kali, by, or Kali, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, by uh, Dan Simmons. This is one of those books, again, that I feel bad every time I, I think about it. The ending here has, the ending of this book is a bigger punch in the gut than the middle of Pet Cemetery. If you have read Pet Cemetery, I mean, Pet Cemetery, you are at least warned what is coming. King uh, does foreshadowing all throughout the beginning of the book, warning you what's going to happen. Dan Simmons gave no fucks whatsoever. He's just like, okay, well, I'm just going to take this sledgehammer, and I'm going to crush your internal organs with it all at one time. I could not believe that that he did what he did in this book. Um, it's, it's one of those times where I was left speechless, and I was left feeling terrible and hopeless. Uh, if uh, th that's the theme here, of course. But yeah, uh, Song of Kali, I don't hear too much about this one. It has a really terrifying scene with uh, uh, in the dark kind of deal. And I love scenes in the dark. There's like flashes of, of light and the character sees something in those flashes of light. And that whole scene is terrifying. If anybody ever made a movie out of this, I, I hope that scene, if no other scene, is intact. So yeah, Song of Kali. Now, with the number one most hopeless book of all time, um, even the author considers it a hopeless book, just an ugly, nasty book, that's Revival by Stephen King. I am shocked when I hear a Stephen King fan say they didn't like this book. Um, I get, uh, there was, I, I actually lost a lot of followers back when I reviewed this book, and I called this his best book in forever. Uh, at that time, you know, he hadn't written the the Outsider um, 
the you know uh, we were still I think we had just gotten uh, Mr. Mercedes or Mr. Mercedes was coming I can't remember but before that I mean we had Doctor Sleep which was and we had eleven twenty two sixty three which is and yeah I think it's and uh, under the dome which was great until the end uh, it had a pretty nasty run from for me anyways my opinion and this one came out of nowhere and people because of those other books I was talking about you know like Doctor Sleep people were standoffish. And when I gave it such high rating, a lot of people went out and bought it, and then they didn't like it. I don't, I don't know why. These were Stephen King fans. I don't know why, because it was quintessential King. Um, it is a terrific story of one man's life, um, and the theme that life is so fleeting was amazingly well done. Uh, I think the hardcover is like 400 pages. I'm not sure. It's Hang on. I always talk about this, how short it is, but someone said it's not really all that short. So let me look at the hardcover edition. Hardcover is only 402 pages. You know how many books in Stephen King's library that are 400 pages? Leave it down in the doobie. <laughs> it's, it's not many, man. It's not many at all. In fact, I'm looking over here and I'm thinking, well, from a Buick 8, you know, Pet Cemetery, uh, Cujo. Most of these books, man, most of his books are over 400 pages. It's 402 pages in hardback. The, this paperback, it's the long, slender ones. Sarah, if you're watching this, uh, this is one of those long ones, like the Vince Flynn stuff I sent you. Um, but this one is almost 500 pages um, because the the because it's so thin. I guess today. But uh, talking about hopelessness, Revival left me, and it's supposed to leave you with a feeling of hopelessness. That is the entire theme, is that nothing matters. It's a very nihilistic book, even though that there is, sense, there is uh, supernatural aspects and all that stuff. It is a very, very nasty book when it comes to the hope, well, when it comes to the truth. I mean, if, if you're, uh, I don't, I guess I consider myself an atheist. I don't believe in it. I believe that when we die, we just die. Um, but to think that there might be something like at the end of this book, that's, that, that's terrifying, um, to me anyways, to think that there's anything, even if the heaven and hell were real, even if heaven were real and I was a diehard Christian and I thought I was going to heaven, that is a scary ass concept that we're going to be alive forever. Think about that. I barely want to be in my head like one hour of a 24 hour day most days because the, you know, I usually, uh, keep myself preoccupied with other things, reading, writing, arithmetic, no, um, reading, writing, video games, uh, talking with uh, my, my wife, playing with my kids, those kind of things, I, t I have to keep myself busy. If I were just like up in, up in heaven, stuck with myself, that would be terrifying. And I know there's probably, you know, Christians out there going, oh, but it, it'd be just a perfect paradise, you know, anything that you could imagine. I don't, have you read, <laughs> I was about to say, have you read my books? There's nothing pleasant going on up here. I can't imagine pleasant stuff. You know, I, I have to create the happiness in my life because there's nothing automatically happy up here. Um, but I also, it, so when people tell me, you know, heaven, hell, all this stuff, at least hell, I guess you'd be around cool people. <laughs> Anyways, so those are my top five uh, hopeful and hopeless novels. I'm sorry, Chad. I know you're a Christian, dude. I'm sorry. Um, but, I mean, we all... <laughs> differing point of views. Why I went off on a tirade in this video in particular, I apologize, but uh, I'm not trying to hate on you. It's just it's just my own point of view when it comes to like uh, hopelessness. Uh, and the the speech that uh, Charlie, what's his name, Charlie Jacobs? Yeah, Charles Jacobs. The speech that he gives after um, after the the death that changes his viewpoint on, uh, on God and religion and all that stuff. Um, after that point, you know, that, I mean, that's, that speech right there is another reason why I love that speech. It's like, that's, that's basically the thoughts that went through my mind when I realized that I might be going down the wrong path and believing in some, you know, like Santa Claus for adults kind of, kind of thing. So, uh, but yeah, let me know your top five hopeful, uh, and hopeless books down there in, in doobly-doo. If you want to make a video, that'd be awesome too. Uh, you don't even have to mention me. I just, just link me so I can go watch it. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.